Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. These are the words that we read today in the Epistle of St. James. And a little story comes to my mind that I had heard. And this was of a, this took place many, many years ago, um, before Vatican II, but it was of a Protestant minister who liked to go to visit different churches uh, in the, in his, in his area. He would go to admire the artistic, um, the aesthetical, the, uh, architectural beauty that was found in a lot of the churches. So he would visit all, all denominations. He would visit Protestant churches. He would visit, um, Catholic churches, he would visit Anglican churches, etc. But on one occasion, he took his son with him um, to visit um, these, these, some of the churches in the area, and he happened to go into a Catholic church. And as they went into the church, the little boy noticed that there was a red light, a red lamp, burning by the altar. The little boy asked his dad, well, what's this red light? Why, I didn't see this in any of the other churches. And the father, knowing a little bit of the background, the Catholic teaching of what the Catholics believe, he said, oh, it's because, to explain it very simply to his son, it's because Jesus is here. Jesus is present in this church, and that's why that lamp is here. Little boy, it was a very simple answer. He understood it and didn't say anything. And a couple weeks went by, and he went up to his dad one day and asked him, Dad, I want to go to the church where Jesus is at. And the dad was a little bit taken aback. He was a little bit shocked. And this, these words just kept going into, over and over in his head. I want to go to the church where Jesus is at, where Jesus is present. And he really, really took these words to heart. And he began to think. He began to ponder. And was, it was the grace of God that was working in his heart and his soul. But he eventually converted to the Catholic faith because he wanted to be in the church where Jesus was at, the church where Jesus was present. And so it is that as we go through this month of April, which is dedicated to the Blessed Sacrament, we should be reminding ourselves of this beautiful gift, this beautiful treasure that Christ has left us, that God has given to us, this true, the real presence of Christ in the Blessed Sacrament. And that is one of the things that for us as Catholics, this, this really separates us from the other religions, from the other denominations, and even from the Novus Ordo. They, say they believe in the real presence, they say that they that they believe that Christ is there, but so many of the people actually don't practice that, don't they put the, so to say, what they believe is the Blessed Sacrament off to the side, and maybe in a different room, uh, just kind of hidden in a corner, and they don't act as they, as they truly should if they believe that, that, if they believe that that were truly Christ. And so it is that for us, we know that we have the real presence of Christ, we have Jesus present with us, we belong to the Catholic Church, and Christ has given to, and left us his body and blood into the species of, of, the, of the Holy Eucharist. So it is that as we come to church, we should always remind ourselves that this is the house of God, that our Lord is truly present in our tabernacle. And this is one of the things that can very be easily forgotten. We come to church and we maybe have a tendency to chit-chat amongst ourselves, or we might um, kind of irreverently walk uh, into the church and not genuflect or not really be looking around at other things, and we forget that Christ is present upon our altar. And we should be definitely living and acting and truly living our belief that Christ is present with us. That's why we genuflect when we come into the church, because our Lord is present. That's why we kneel when we receive our Divine Lord in Holy Communion, because he, we are receiving our Divine Lord. And so it is that let us make sure that our behavior in church is reverent, that it's devout, and that we don't just, that we don't forget the pre real presence of Christ in our bless, in, in the Holy Eucharist and on, on our altar. And just think about the time when you didn't have a church. Think about the time when you didn't have a chapel, when you didn't have our Lord present. And how maybe you were at a mission and you had Mass <clears throat> here and there. You didn't have the Blessed Sacrament reserved. And that, you know, we have such a huge gift, a huge treasure. You know, come and make visits to the Blessed Sacrament. Come and visit our Lord. As he tells us, come to me, all you who will labor in our burden. Now we'll refresh you. And he's a prisoner of love here in our church. And another thing that we should keep in mind is that we should be trying to receive our Blessed Lord as often as possible because he comes down upon our altar at every Mass. And as we know, the, wine and, and the bread and the wine are turned into the body and blood of Christ at the Mass, at the, at the consecration, by means of transubstantiation. 
And so this is truly a great thing that, that we have, that a great gift that our Lord has given to us. This is a great gift and perfect gift that has been given to us from above as we read from the words of St. James in today's epistle. So let us make sure that we have this reverence, this love for the Blessed Sacrament, and that when we receive our Lord in Holy Communion, that we truly make a reverent thanksgiving, that we really put some thought, that we are praying, that we're asking our Lord for the grace, for the strength that we need, uh, praying for our family members, praying for special blessings for ourselves, and really using the time after Holy Communion um, as a special, it was one of the most important times in our day, whenever we receive Holy Communion. And I just think to myself, if I were to come to one of your houses and, you know, you invite me over for dinner and say I we chit-chat for a little bit before supper and then I eat, I eat dinner and then not, e not even finishing the last spoonful of my, of my food, I, you know, put that into my mouth and I get up and say, okay, I'm out of here. Some of you, I think most of you would think, it's pretty rude. You, you, sit, you wait, enjoy the rest of the, you know, enjoy the rest of the, of the evening, a little bit of, a little bit more of, of conversation, a little bit more of the company. You wouldn't just get up right away and leave. That would be, like I said, rude. And that's, we have to remind ourselves that it's the same when we, we go, when we go to Holy Communion. We're going to a feast, we're going to a banquet, and we are partaking of the, of the spiritual, of the spiritual bread, of spiritual food. And so it would be very rude for us if right away to get up and go. Um, the Holy Mother of the Church teaches us that our Divine Lord is present within us for at least 15 minutes after Holy Communion. And so after Holy Communion, we have our Lord within us for 15 minutes. So from the end of, from when you receive Holy Communion to the end of Mass, maybe that's 10 minutes. You should be spending another five minutes. So just, you know, couple, couple minutes, couple minutes, two, three, four, five minutes after Mass to finish your thanksgiving, to thank our Divine Lord for having come to you, and like I said, to converse with Him, to enjoy His company, and to definitely um, to appreciate what He has done for us by giving Himself to us in Holy Communion. So that would be a very, it's a very good practice uh, to make a thanksgiving even after Mass, not just to get up right away and to leave, because uh, that would be, I would consider that being rude to our Divine Lord in, uh, in, in, in the Holy Eucharist. So let us keep this in mind and try to do our very best to keep going to communion as often as possible. It's not, the Holy Mother of the Church doesn't give us the, any great obstacles to have to overcome. All we have to be is, in this, all we have to do is to be in the state of grace, to have the three hour fast, um, from food and an hour fast from, from drink besides water. So it's not impossible and the Holy Mother of the Church makes it very easy for us. And so let us make sure we, we're going to communion often and receiving our Lord in Holy Communion. And one of the things that we keep in mind is that our Blessed Mother was given a great privilege at, as we know that she bore our Divine Lord in her womb for nine months. What a great privilege that was. And we think about she, she was a tabernacle, so to say, of God. She bore our Lord within her for nine months. And the same privilege that was given to our Blessed Mother is given to us as well because we, in turn, become tabernacles of God. We become tabernacles of Christ. As we receive in, in Holy Communion, we are truly carrying our Lord about us and we are a tabernacle of God. And that is one of the things that we, especially when we are in the, besides that, we, when we receive our Lord in Holy Communion, we are a tabernacle of God. But also, being in the state of grace, we are also a tabernacle of God. We carry the life of God within us, in our souls. So that is why it's important for us to never defile the tabernacle of God, to never do anything that would, so to say, desecrate that tabernacle, that holy temple of God of which we are. We are temples of God, we are temples of the Holy Ghost by means of sanctifying grace and especially whenever we receive God in Holy Communion. So let us keep this great reverence for this tabernacle, for this temple of God and do our very best to remember that great privilege that is given to us. And as we go through this, as we finish up this month of April, remembering that this month was dedicated to the Blessed Sacrament and, um, and keeping in mind this marvelous gift that distinguishes us from all the other religions, and as this Protestant minister realized, he said his little boy, you know, told him, "I want, to, I want to go to the church where Jesus is at." And so we belong to this, to the Catholic Church, the church where Jesus is present, where Jesus is is with us upon our altars. So what a great thing uh, for us, and let us really appreciate it, and not not grow cold in our love for Christ, but let that love for Him grow more and more, and especially by receiving our Divine Lord often in Holy Communion.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.